Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome back to Monterey Dwellers. Finn, Lydia, together as per usual, uh, with a very special guest today for What's in Your Basket. Actually, the specialist of special guests, really. For <laughs> special. Yeah. Thank you. It's the truth. Susan Jane White, Susan Jane Kitchen, otherwise known as. Um, Susan Jane, Hi guys. Uh, we've known since she was Susan Jane Murray and has been a customer for a long time. 15 years. Wow. Oh. And since you started writing books, we've had your books in the shop. Also true. We've done demos with you. You did a demo at our 40th birthday celebration, which you co-hosted with us. So you've been around a long time. You have you've been one of our best customers for a very, very long time. And we're giddy fans. Uh, like really giddy fans. We started the podcast, but it was like... Ah, yeah. it's <laughs> ridiculous. Let's get Susan Jane. And that was like five years ago. I, I this is the thing. How did we not get it done? I don't know. Anyway, it's right great that we did. Yeah, true. Um, she manifested it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so, so basically, I, I suppose for me, I'd like to sit here and talk to you for hours about your origin story, which is like superhero origin story in terms of illness to health and da 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 da. And not what got you into this. Like, foundationally, what we're here to talk about is what's in your basket, which is very, like, micro. But can you give us, like, a a bit of a flavour? Because, like, the first time I saw your book, I think what really hit home was it, like, finally, somebody's finally yeah. done it. Yeah, yeah. Gluten-free, low-sugar, yeah. dairy-free, you know, stuff that, like, nobody, like, nobody, or people had done it. That's not true. It was done, but it was done by raw, vegan, tired looking not very exciting photograph book sure. people yeah. it just wasn't great and yours was like giddy with enthusiasm full of silly puns <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. so can you tell us like this my first wrote a cookbook <laughs> yeah kind of so so how did we get to that stage can you take us to the bit before that just briefly to give us a, an idea for those who yeah. don't know sure um for those um who i haven't met yet out there um i am a total health nerd and um a uh my background is in, in science and in social anthropology. Um, so I've always been fascinated with everything, basically. <laughs> I was about to say yeah. good with everything. And when I, when, I, when I pour my own light onto a subject, I like to get down really nitty gritty mm. and deep. And I came to food from a place of illness. So I, I, everybody knows that food is our own source of fuel, our own body's source of fuel. Um, and I thought I was healthy before I fell very ill. I was doing really well. I was a um, good athlete. I was doing a, a training for a pentathlon at the time well, as well. So it wasn't like I was I was skipping out um, on sports, sitting at home uh, in front of TV eating crisps every day. I was very active. Um, I I was living off junk food, but the healthy junk food, mm -hmm. which I thought I was doing uh, my body a favour, but I wasn't. And eventually my body just kind of started breaking down I'm getting a very average illness. Um, and it, I was living in England, and in England they have a system whereby, I'm, I'm not blaming the doctors at all, they are overwhelmed with mm. um, huge demand for their services. So they had, at the, at the time I was there, 5.5 minutes per patient. Mm. And you can't diagnose or really properly hear any yeah. patient. Limited time, so, limited toolkit. Exactly. Kind of I was given antibiotics for um, things I should never have had antibiotics for. Mm. And so it all snowballed in 12 sets of antibiotics later. Cool. Steroids, vaccinations to see to try and kickstart my immune system to do something. All of this um, uh, resulted in what I think now, and in retrospect, we can see would have just massacred my microbiome, my gut, mm. my lips, right? But at the time, that was not... Um, an area of science that was very well known or researched or discovered. So uh, they had the doctors had no idea what to do with me. I was in hospitalized. This way you know I was in for several weeks and from one consultant to another they'd come in and they'd try and figure out what's going on and they couldn't unify any of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. But they knew that my immune system was totally shot. I had a low IgG response rate. I got everything from constant eye infections to I was I'd always had a sore throat. I was I was in a really bad way. Mm. And um, as I mentioned, we, we can now relate that to my microbiome was just really suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that's directly related to our immune response. But back then it wasn't. Uh, oh, sorry, it was related obviously to my immune response, but we didn't know, we just didn't know what it was. So that's where I came from. But this is how I got really obsessed with food because at that point um, I was, um, uh, I was going to say ejected from the hospital. For, basically, oh, yeah. we're ejected, done with you. Ejected, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. dejected, yeah. Um, uh, and told that you know come back in a year, 
there's nothing more we can do for you um, and just rest. And that um, was terrifying because I was I was living the dream. I had got mm. into Oxford University um, and I thought this is, um, you know, I was training to be a pentathlete. Life couldn't have been better. And then I fell, I couldn't get out of bed. Wow. You know, that was, it was massive. Wow. So um, I had to try and nurse myself back because no one else could do it for me. Wow. And that's when I looked at food and I just decided, okay, I'm going to um, clear everything from my diet and I'm just focusing on primary ingredients. Mm. At the time, I thought it might be an allergy to something. So I went to an allergy specialist, Dr. Joe Fitzgibbon, who still works in the same area, the same field, um, allergy and fatigue. And he changed my life. Oh. He was well ahead of the science, um, or should I say, kind of the mainstream science. Stuff. Yes, yeah. because it, there was lots of research coming out, mm. but it wasn't published in the British Medical Journal. And, mm. and in fairness, Professor um, Crean and um, Dean in, in UCC, yeah, yeah. they were spearheading a lot of the research. Was that oh, Fergus Shanahan? Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Fergus Shanahan as well, well, mainly Fergus. Um, uh, so there would have been a small body of research on the microbiome. Mm. And Dr. Joseph Fitzgibbon, who I found, he was on top sure. and yeah. said, okay, we're going to nurse your gut mm -hmm. back, okay? And it could be allergies or it could just be your gut is suffering. So. Mm. Under his guidance, um, uh, I started building the foods back in um, and then found, wow, this is amazing. So I don't need to live in pasta and pizza and this lentils, this chickpeas, this juice. So I was introduced to this whole kaleidoscope of new ingredients where I would have been afraid to, to try them mm -hmm. before. You know, yeah. walking around a health food store to me at that point was too exotic and foreign. And I just thought yeah. it was for people who didn't grow up in my culture. Yes, yeah. and they didn't grow up with cereal in the morning, yeah, sandwich yeah. for lunch, and and pasta in the evening. Um, and it was only then I could actually reflect on what I was eating before I fell ill, mm. which was the same stuff: processed wheat, mm. cereals, pizza, pasta, sandwiches, yeah. and very little else. So um, that's what pulled me into my obsession with food. And the minute I started working with Joe Fitzgibbon, it felt like my illness was just being sucked out of my body. Mm -hmm. He was extraordinary. So I just, I knew I was on the right path. It didn't, didn't happen overnight, but I was brilliant a year later and mm -hmm. really good. How cool. Um, and it's a year, that's, yeah. that's impressive because yeah, yeah. a lot of people drag it out for a lot longer. Yeah. Even yeah. when they are on the right path. Yeah. Even when they are, yeah. yeah. I mean, it did take, uh, it takes a long time to build your gut so back up when mm -hmm. you're that bad. Yeah. I mean, 12 courses of antibiotics and yeah, nobody should be subjected to that. And I know there's plenty who are, um, but the, 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 the sort of the, the tragedy of my situation was that I probably didn't even need the first one, then the yeah. twelfth one. So it was um, uh, it was a system that didn't suit my system, yeah, yeah, it's a medical yeah, yeah. system that didn't suit my, my body. And now I know how to treat my body. So it has been a blessing. I know it sounds far too optimistic to say, but I really do believe um, uh, that that point in my life was a total blessing because I was able to return to Oxford and do more than what I was doing then. Yeah. And um, uh, instead of staying in academia, I decided just to write about food and to share my passion and, and adoration and adulation for mm. really healthful, health-giving food and how you can turn your body around mm. and, and live a, a much more healthy life and um, increase longevity and yeah. happiness. Yeah, just think, simply and, through food. And the short term, the joy of the short term stuff with your cooking, I think, particularly the stuff I read of yours as well, is both the simplicity and the excitement of it. And it's like the here and now, whatever about the longevity and knowing you're going to live, it's very difficult for people to perceive putting life on years and how valuable it is until it really hits them in the face. If when, you know, you come across some big moment with your mortality and usually at some point you go, okay, now I need to look after it. But to get out ahead of it, I think doing it in the way that your kind of guidance does, which is, you know, your Sunday independent articles, which are always great fun. They're like routinely simple. They're routinely like accessible, but they're also like there's this like giddy kind of fervency to mm. to it, and and I think that's the thing. It's 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 taking the kind of the hell out of healthy. I did it! I did it! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reading your own script back to you for once. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the the cool thing that I because I had been I have a really similar backstory to yours, and I've been kind of gluten free, dairy free, sugar free, alcohol free, all this stuff for years before I got your cookbook. 
and I've had all these different cookbooks and I've come all these different Instagram accounts, it's different things. But it was always like if you wanted to cook the way that I was having to cook, it was like you had to not be interested in eating anything sweet ever again. Mm. And it all had to be very worth it. Yeah. And I was like, but I love food. Yeah. I love drinking. Yeah. I love cooking. I love entertaining. I love treats. I want to bait with my kid. And I don't want him to just be like, oh, I get to eat yes. assholes. I want him to be like, oh, fuck, let's of- make banana muffin yeah. or chocolate balls or fudge in the fridge. And, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. And you, yeah. your book was like the first person who was had a reverence to us as well. It was like funny and you know, you're joking about it and you're making it fun. And so the whole thing just feels really relatable and it feels like, oh, this is a person like me. Oh, well, oh, thank like you. Me. That's exactly what I want. It's, 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 it's exactly what was needed because I couldn't find that to yeah. me when I needed it. Yes. It was, it was seen to be penitential. Yeah. It was, it was almost like, it, yeah, it, it was like a punishment. Yeah. Um, a double punishment because yeah. not really suffering, you're already sick. I know. Like, come on. <laughs> And I have to eat worse things than other people oh, and look yes. at jealously around at yeah. the pizzas and pasta people. Like, forget it. Your tahini fudge, I think. Like, how many people have we individually and collectively made that for? I mean, we've probably, oh, probably more, more than 100 people, more than 100. definitely. And we coated at workshops and... and ah, um, yeah. it's yeah. good to hear Yeah, that. I mean, like, genuinely. So you're, tahini, and your stuff is so easy tahini. to evangelize. That's the thing. It's like, I didn't like tahini before okay. I tried your tahini fudge. Genuinely. I mean, selling tahini. Yeah, I'll talk about it so my, yeah my history i think because i'd grown up around it i didn't really okay. enjoy tofu either i'm like okay. come on i was the smell of the stuff and it yes. was constantly around me and it wasn't really made that exciting yeah i never had teeny as a dessert honestly you know it was usually in the hummus or in yes. other kind of versions that weren't ex- i can't even think of them now i can only think of the exciting versions that you have like <laughs> or like you know nice marinades or whatever but um but yeah so i think i was kind of put off by it and then like it was your tahini fudge, I think, with the first thing I was like, oh, hang on, hold up, hang on, yeah. I actually, this is good food. I'm, sa- I'm saying it's not just because it's worthy, because it's actually enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and we cool. still have that. That was one of my first things. And look, I, I, I came across that recipe as a complete mistake. Will I tell you this? Sorry, well, I should be yes. going to the basket. No, 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 this one, is One fun. last story. Um, uh, how I discovered that as a recipe for, for your lovely listeners, it's um, mixing tahini mm-hmm. with a little bit of coconut oil, um, raw honey, and when you freeze that, it doesn't freeze like a solid block. It's like a scoopable ice cream. Mm-hmm. So you can add things like pomegranate or rose petals or pistachio. Um, we love having coffee beans in there with mm-hmm. chunks of dark chocolate. And so it, it holds a, an array of different flavor combinations. And tahini is just wildly tasty on its own anyway, with a bit of smoky sea salt. So mm-hmm. again, right back go. to what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so how I discovered it was, um, when I was on the elimination diet with Dr. Joe, Joe Fitzgibbon, and um, uh, in the beginning I had to cut out fruit as well, just in case there was some sort of a FODMAP thing that yeah. happening. And, and so I was, I, I had so much, a lot of grapes, a huge number of grapes. See yeah. there in the case, yeah. and nodding away. And um, I was able to satiate them with a scoop of tahini. Yeah. And, and I was having too much of it because, you know, there's the, so I froze it thinking, mm-hmm. Once it's frozen, I actually won't be able to get my student. (laughs) So, you know, four hours later, the cravings came back. I want want to treat. So I opened the freezer and and expected it to be frozen solid, but it was super because of the mercy of of natural. Yeah, 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 great. great. And it was even better. (laughs) I was like, uh oh. Wait until I can get my hands on honey again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I even sprinkled sea salt on it. This Mm. is this is phenomenal. I wonder if this is a thing. And it wasn't at all. So that was one of my first ever recipes that I developed. What a discovery! Um, Accident and yeah. a fire. That's really fun, isn't it? <laughs> it is. yeah. Wow. Because I would have so been allowed pomegranate seeds. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so oh. I was able to put them in, 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 at an early stage. That's yeah. very advanced, very early stage <laughs> stuff. Oh, look, you can get very advanced, very early stage when you need <laughs> when to. You, yeah, you know, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Must yeah. is a great master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> must is a great master. Great way to look at it. Um, okay. Yeah, needles. Okay, let's get into this. Okay. Susan Jane, what's in your basket? What is in your basket? This has been ridiculously hard because um, I, I mean, if, if, if Finn and Lydia were to ask me even just for one shelf of the hop sack, um, it would be hard. But the whole entire shop, so I gave a theme to it. It's mm. like the stress, the stressful, busy mom, and especially coming up to Christmas. Mm-hmm. So I wanted everyone to know about kimchi. So if you're not making your own, in the hop sack stock, incredible. Um, brands of kimchi, not just one, there's several, and most stores don't. I haven't found them anywhere else because mm-hmm. maybe it's because um, when you've such a dedicated following of people who are genuinely into their health. So 
and um, not only one jar of kimchi, there's, you know, there's one sort of cork. Four or five brands yeah. of kimchi. Yeah. We sell like 60, 70 jars a week of kimchi. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's Isn't unbelievable. That, it's mad. I've really done the calculations of the thinking, oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay. That's Stunning. Weird. And there's lots of sauerkrauts, so it's it, just, exactly. that's just the kimchi. That's just the kimchi. <laughs> yeah. And why I chose kimchi is because I've been eating it every day for probably six or seven years. And I, I genuinely mean that. It's not a throwaway comment saying of, I eat it every day. I will go home after this and I will be eating kimchi. I'm addicted to it. There's something that I crave so much in it. And also for, for busy people out there, it's just one fourth full will give you six or seven plants in, in just one fourth full. So yeah, if you're trying you to get your Tim Spector 30 mm, plants yeah. uh, a week, this is six or seven. You need yeah. your chili, ginger, garlic, daikon, radish. I uh, Sorry, that's supposed to be the same. And the, and the carrot. Cabbage. And the cabbage. Yeah, and the cabbages. Amazing. Yeah, so um, it's, it's really health giving and I feel like it, it just kind of races through my bloodstream like a bow run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. Genuinely you feel it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Um, but what, so. If you were not just having it, so, so someone like me who would be not naturally inclined towards the kimchi taste, mm. how would you put it on a thing that wasn't just like, I'm keeping Not just food. straight away. So, um, do you eat meat? Yeah. Okay, so it, it helps cut through the fattiness of meat. Mm, nice. So when, for example, a lamb or chicken, and if you're if you're reaching for lemon or even just a chili sauce, that's the time to try kimchi. Mm -hmm. okay. Because it yeah, it helps um and it'll help with your digestion as well of meat. Um and everything because it's not only the, the lovely good microbes, but um mm -hmm. as I said, it's it's feeding the variety mm -hmm. in your um your metropolis. Yeah. yeah of um, the beneficial bacteria. So um, it's keeping your gut happy in more than one way. So I totally recommend kimchi and I live on it. Mm. And today's variety is from the Fumbly, but yeah. there are other brands you can choose as well, as Finn said, in the, in the fridge. Speaking of the Fumbly, because we basically in every episode we mention something from the Fumbly, but specifically my favorite ever thing I've had with kimchi was made by Katie Sanderson, who was an ex Fumbly, whatever, yes. alumni graduate. I don't know what they call them these days. The lady who invented right, yeah. she made kimchi pancakes. Oh when yeah, we, we were at a. I mean, I was so I don't know how I got invited oh. to this. Sandra Katz, you know Sandra Katz. Yeah. So he's like the father, godfather of fermentation. Mm -hmm. I got invited to like a twelve-person dinner with him, private dinner in the public, where we each had to bring some fermented thing. Okay. I mean, I don't. I think Amazing. I went there with a the sense of hubris because I didn't realize the people in the room. And I got in there, I was like, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I was like, I have these kefir truffles. I'm gonna put them in the back. What, what do you mean? They're nothing, nothing. <laughs> But so embarrassing. It was really bad. I mean, they were actually uh, people were nice about them and they were okay. But like I the stuff that exactly people were, there was some very chefy humans in that room. Okay. And Katie's kimchi pancakes were like, oh my god, kimchi good. Like savory pancakes. Mm. Just so she blitzed. So she blitzed it. Oh. And then and then but like not completely blitzed. So you have the batter, but there's like a little bit of texture left. Oh. And yeah, just and then just pancakes. So spicy pancakes. And you put maybe like trout pate on top, or I can't remember what she did, and like that sort of stuff. Cheese. And a cheesy, like there, yeah, yeah, trout pate for some reason's in my head. But you're like, cheese, cheese. You show up with your weird weirdo trout pate idea. I think it works. One might, one might think, for example, with your bellini is some trout pate. Is that wrong? Jeez, okay, fine. <laughs> Bullying. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's, okay, that's a good. So. I'm, I'm sold. What do we go for next? You are sold, that's gonna be interesting. Yes. Okay. This is a big deal for you, isn't it? It's a huge deal. Yeah. So I discovered these in your store. Mm. They're broccoli sprouts that have been juiced by a farmer in Wexford, Michael. Mm. And, and uh, they are preserved with lactic acid, a tiny bit of lactic acid. Am I right in saying that? Mm -hmm. That was the last time I looked yeah, at this. Yeah. Was, yeah. So they are phenomenally made, um, local. And my body really thrives on this. I, anytime I feel like I have a tickle in my throat or um, I'm fatigued in some way, I reach for this. And I've done a lot of research around it because um, I just wonder how my body responds to it so well. So it is about 100 times stronger than mature broccoli in sulforaphane. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And sulforaphane, there's a few kind of celebrity gastroenterologists out mm. there like... Um, uh, who talk Brandon about it. Brandon Patrick does yes, mad about it. She yeah, she really does, like, it. a lot. It's that's her big it. thing. Yes, Find My Fitness. That's yeah. the one behind Find My Fitness. Mm. Who has Dr. Will Bolsovich, oh, who yeah. has just released Fiber Fuel. So he's oh. a U.S. medical doctor um, uh, who swears by sulforaphane. Mm. Um, it's it's in, of course, you're going to get um, sulforaphane in kimchi as well because mm. it's in the cruciferous veggies mm. and cabbage. And, but this is just 100 times stronger in broccoli sprouts. And Michael, the chap who makes this, um, he recovered from cancer and was in obviously the depths of, of research during his cancer mm -hmm. um, as to what he can do to actively 
change how his body is responding to his illness. And that's where he came across. He, he started making his own broccoli sprouts yeah. and survived his aggressive form of cancer and wanted to spread the word. Now, I'm not saying that, that this is no, what this is for information and entertainment purposes only, exactly. people. Exactly. Hey. Um, because I'm sure Michael was doing a whole suite of other things. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. As you would definitely. Conventional do. therapies, blending, da 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 da. Yes, mm -hmm. you'd need to talk to Michael to find out about those. Yeah. But the point being is um, his body responded very well to it yeah. as well. I'm, and I know there's there's amazing studies with broccoli spread juice. So they've shown that like one, I think it's, is it is something like, I think it's, a, I think it is a 30 mil shot actually of broccoli spread juice increased the arsenic by arsenic excretion in the urine by something like 200% within like four hours of like single dose. Wow. So okay. that shows you how powerful it is at like yes. removing crap ah, from our system. And okay. like arsenic, you're talking about like yes. benzene, all these sorts of things that are around in our system because of all the whatever essentially we're the sucking on, yeah. yeah, we're sucking on fumes all day long in the urban environment. And um, as well as liver protective stuff, cellular protective antioxidant properties, it increases the shuttling and the um, the production of glutathione, obviously, so glutathione transferase is the enzyme that, that triggers the shuttling of it, as well as the production of it. Uh, it's obviously providing the base material to make it as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's powerful. And there's, there's people out there who are, and I'm trying to think, people you'd know, probably not Peter or Tia, but similar folk, who refer to maybe the human body as like, we talk about it as being carbon-based <clears throat> life forms. There are some people out there who say, actually, there is a contentious argument to say that we might be sulfur-based life forms because the sulfur is just as important in terms of making up our DNA, making like okay. every foundational component of our body, it's some level involved sulfur. Okay. And so yeah, broccoli sprouts, incredible summer sulfur, form of sulfur, yeah. So tell me something, is having one of those better than eating broccoli sprouts yeah. yourselves or powdered broccoli sprouts? Mm -hmm. Like what's the hierarchy there? I think, so from what I understand, it takes something like three kilos of broccoli sprouts to make 100 mils of juice, something like that. Okay. It's a crazy ratio. So mm -hmm. you're never going to eat three kilos of broccoli sprouts. Uh, like you, but you might drink three of these, you know, yeah. and you certainly can. The only thing you need to watch out, whatever, a little bit of fermentation, sometimes you take too much too soon with the sulfurous compound thing. Um, powdered stuff, I guess the further you remove something from its original state, the more mm. processing, the more potential oxidation, the things that are in there are definitely vulnerable to oxidation. As we know, mm -hmm. Michael spent a lot of time trying to make sure his things, because they used to come in with like five weeks of a shelf life. Yes, and then he, I remember. Do you remember that? that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and he used, to, he used to put down that he found his lactic acid thing, which is great. Um, so I think, yeah, for me, capsules, you can't really condense these guys down without at some level threatening the constituents mm -hmm. and i haven't really seen a capsule that replaces that liquid yeah. at all I, I would have it on the shelf if it is and i, I haven't yeah. mm -hmm. oh also one thing that so i haven't seen this anywhere else i get in the hop sack that's what i do but sometimes and um, uh, if my body is especially during winter and and uh, if my mom for example in during covid i wasn't able to visit my mom at weeklo so i got her a subscription a monthly subscription of this cool. directly mm -hmm. from michael mm -hmm. So the, I thought that was a really gorgeous thing. I might do that, the same thing for Christmas. That's nice. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a lovely, it, it, it's a, a lovely thing to do to be able to, you know, come in, buy a few of these for somebody who's not well, for mm -hmm. example, Big or time. a friend, and leave it yeah. at the doorstep. Yeah. Or you yeah, know, so really I have, I really haven't seen this anywhere else. So this is, I discovered it in the hop sack, and that was, um, given that I've been in the hop sack for around 15 years when your old hop sack, the one year bubble dad, yeah, yeah, and then the expansion and the expansion again. Literally everything that I discover is from the hop sack. Fun. <laughs> okay. Fun fact. Boys. Next. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll take it. Oil. Yeah, so still on the stress theme. Um, so this is going to keep your body and your motor going, your, your, mm. your uh, broccoli sprout juice and your kimchi. Um, CBD oil, I wouldn't be normally a fan of CBD oil, it doesn't pollen me, but this particular Irish brand, Ethos, absolutely does. Oh. So this one is um, Ethos Balanced CBD oil. They grow their own hemp in Wicklow. So it's cold pressed hemp seed oil um, and CBD uh, with natural peppermint. So your breath smells amazing after taking mm. it because I don't know if, if you're familiar with CBD, it kind of smells like a liquid ashtray. And so that's why I've never really been drawn to it. Um, uh, but this has peppermint. So it's almost like a breath freshener once or twice a day, but it's doing your body so much more yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And they're so clever. Fergus and Amy, I think, are behind mm -hmm. it. Ashwagandha is, would you call it an adaptogen? Yeah, it yeah. is definitely one of the proper ones. Yeah. One of the proper ones. Yeah, so you in a moment, I want you to tell me more about ashwagandha. I haven't really been... Um, 
uh, on top of it because mm -hmm. um, I can't play with it in my kitchen, right? Oh, yeah, but of course. I hadn't yeah. really been playing with it yeah. until I heard Professor um, Andrew Huberman from yeah. Stanford University. Uh -huh. He takes ashwagandha and he did a bit of a meta-analysis. Um, now, I'll, I'm paraphrasing what he said, obviously. So if you want to Google his name and, and ashwagandha, um, if you want to learn more about it, but he was saying there's very tangible effects on, on ashwagandha and the relationship to cortisol mm, and yeah. stress. Yeah. And he said it's not woo-woo. Mm. Ashwagandha is something that we should definitely consider if um, our stress response is under pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During Christmas time. Yeah. And recommend this enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so CBD regulates your nervous system in a really lovely way, very gentle way, and ashwagandha certainly seems to help to recover people's cortisol response stress or reset uh -huh. it in a way. Okay. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I listened to that episode, actually, his adoptions episode. I was like, ooh, finally, he's doing adoptions. Yes, this is nice. I was yeah. really fascinated mm -hmm. because you know, it's just something I didn't expect a neuroscientist to really. jump onto with such um, uh, strength and tenacity. Yeah, big time. And he's really open to it. What the only, and I'm like, let myself go back and forth about Andrew Huberman because for all that he's great for, and I think he really is great, he's, he's amazing. The sound of people who are listening to him are getting to hear stuff that they would never hear inside the Hopsack or other places. He's got a huge audience, which is fantastic. But like when he did that adoptions episode, I was like, okay, where's the rest of them? Because Ashwagandha, like the problem is Ashwagandha has become the doyen of the of the, of the adaptogen oh, kind of thing. And everyone's like, oh, adaptogens equals, oh, look, there's a season game white book across there on the shelf, by the way. There's your end. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it is. Yeah, it is there. I'm actually the ones you gave us, in fact, before that Supernatural Cooking, you you gave us it on... Oh, uh, fabulous. Yes, and it's nice. under the training material. There Excellent. you go. <laughs> File with training material. Uh, so anyway, so the, the things I think that people miss a trick with, with anything, unfortunately, natural health-wise, is that it's an individuated, yeah. individualized thing. And that's where Huberman and Andrew Huberman and, and most of the scientists that are coming out this area kind of miss the... Uh -huh. The trick, and particularly with adaptions. Adaptions, like all foods, if you go to Ayurvedic mm -hmm. medicine where they understand some traditional Chinese medicine, they understand that foods have qualities that are energetic and energetic qualities pair to humans' energetic qualities yes. and hence suit them in different ways. Ashwagandha for like, I don't know, let's say seven out of 10 people, it'll help them sleep. Three out of 10 people, it's gonna send them bonkers. And the reason why is Ashwagandha is a very male tonic. It's a bit, it's a, okay. So it's traditionally used as a fertility tonic in, in, um, in India where it comes from. Its name translates as like, strength of 10,000 horses or something like that, which is like, yeah, <laughs> but it's like male fortitude, gotcha, gotcha. go forward, lift yeah. that boulder like Andrew Huberman loves to do, do you know, like put it yeah. on the mountain, sweat. Yeah, yeah. But what Andrew Huberman probably needs, as most men who are in that kind of type A, and women yeah. who are in that type A, because yeah. it's a masculine, not a male quality, but a masculine quality, is actually something to de, like to, uh, to de-escalate that hyper, go get achieve vibe thing yeah. in order to, the, to 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 enhance their kind of feminine quality yeah. they're like compassionate caring lateral thinking you know the, yeah. the other elements and i'm not saying those are female qualities they're feminine qualities what we would call yeah excellent and so, yeah. differentiation there yeah. not female but feminine qualities. Yeah. yeah and we all have them yeah. right you see you see them in your in your guy friends and your girlfriends and your everyone else friends mm -hmm. and you you see those kind of like those things at play and they, they play out differently at different times of our lives in response to different environmental things and that's what adoptions are beautiful for so if let's say a woman or a man is the sort of person who responds to stress with like we would say like with more fear, high state, panicky, anxiety, as opposed to like get through that stress, muscle through, da 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 da. Both of those are mm. toxic responses to yes. stress. Yeah. Ashwagandha is for the first one, not for the second uh -huh. one. Ashwagandha is only going to enhance that second one, you know, because uh -huh. it's going to give you more like, cool, and now I got potency and brilliant, I can do even yeah. more work. You're like, no, Andrew Cooperman, stop, slow down, go to bed. Smell the lavender. Drink a rose tea, you <laughs> douche. Do you know, like genuinely, I, and he's an amazing guy, he's got great knowledge, but it's just, but, but that's what. Yeah. Western science doesn't do, which is like embrace mm. that that part, mm. the energetic qualities. And so like Ashwagandha, beautiful as a really deep tonic, particularly when somebody's like on the floor energy wise, really like stress is making them so they just want to go to bed. They just want to get out of there and they're not interested in having like, you know, anything more to do. They want to just mm -hmm. get stuff off their desk because they're just receding from it. Yes. Ashwagandha gives you, I can do this, you know, that sort of capability okay. thing. So yeah, anyway. Ah, that's interesting. Mm. I think you need to write him a letter then. I think you'd be very open to receiving that knowledge. I do. I think the evidence-based framework thing is the thing he's going to come back at it from. He's like, where's the evidence base? And I'll say it's all empirical and testimonial and centuries of thousands of years. I don't, that's, who knows? For fun, yeah. I'll write a letter. 
Why not? Yes. I didn't call it with Dina Chambre Green just to be really clear just if this easy. ever does Watch get his, yeah. Uh, podcast, yeah. I tell yeah. that I don't know. He just, might do his research. He I might do his maybe. research. <laughs> was there a bit of hubris in that, was there? Yeah. Okay, 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 I guess. Um, <laughs> I'll, 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 thank, thank you for putting me on. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> moving on. The last the final two are actually very related but because well for us. Um, I have a, for those listening at home and they can't see me pointing to the camera, I have um, acai, um, little kind of blocks of frozen acai, which is a berry from the Amazon. And I have nobo, which is made around the corner from us, and roasted almond butter. And it's phenomenal. It's the nicest almond butter I've ever tasted. And they do various ones. So it's difficult for me to choose one today. Ooh, is there another one here? I would also recommend any other nut butter. Oh. <laughs> Wait for us. Here's what we made earlier. Oh, but this so one yeah, is off cold status. It's, yeah. it's called caramelly spread. It's roasted pistachio, but I think there's olive oil in it. Yeah, coconut sugar and cashew nuts in it. It's phenomenal and it's very often sold out. Mm, and it's a drizzle. It's not even a it's spread. A you just turn it, it just drips it's out dri- like it a drips out. Actually, oh, all of Nobo's nut butters drip. Kind of do, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. it because there's nothing wrong with the claggy nut butters and varieties of nut butters, but they're not for me. I love the runny ones. So we... Um, Given that there's so much vitamin E in almond, I can mm. kind of gravitate towards this. Um, I'm now in my mid 40s, so anything that um, boasts uh, anti-aging properties like mm. vitamin E for oh, my guy. skin. Oh, Again, oh, yeah. carotenoids, <laughs> vitamin E, <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah, where's that zinc? <laughs> oh God. So that's why uh, I'm, I have this almost on a daily basis as well, and um, I do try to change it up so I'm not getting just mm. um, with a little nod to Professor Tim Spector of my variety of plants. Um, so uh, I will open up a different one every um, every time. Favorite I, way I, to use your almond butter? On the acai. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm going to tell you how yeah. we make it as a, acai. Mm. But now the reason I wanted to bring this up as well, I think it's really sweet. And um, I make this for my boys and. Because it stains, they can't leave the table. And so we have a great chat for mm. 20, 25 minutes. So nice. They're prisoners to me. Whereas, <laughs> otherwise, you make them That's hot the chocolate, deal. they're gone. Yeah, you yeah. know, so and uh, it is like, like, kids are busy. They're busy, 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 busy. And um, they know that it stains. So I actually get a really good moment every day <laughs> with them sitting down. And because it's freezing, they get brain freeze. So they yeah. might even stay longer. <laughs> That's amazing. So for busy people, having something like a treat, it doesn't have to be the acai. I just brought it up because this is what I love doing for the boys. But it's something that, um, you know, um, can facilitate this bonding time. And my boys love acai because it's it's quite trendy now in the last two years. So they see um, teenagers or, you know, really fit young folk going into cafes having acai bowls. Mm-hmm. So I thought if I could make it myself, I would save a fortune. So in the hop sack, you get four blocks inside this packet for eight euro. Yeah. If I was to go out and treat my boys and myself to an acai bowl, it's between 30 and 35 quid. I'd be shutting out. Well, yeah. So oh, one yeah. of these blocks will serve the three of us. And I blend in, in a, a high speed blender. So a really mm-hmm. kind of powerful blender with um, frozen banana. I've got mm-hmm. a squadron of frozen banana in my mm-hmm. freezer. Frozen banana. Frozen cherries or whatever frozen berries you can get frozen um, Wexford blackcurrants actually in most um, uh, regular supermarkets now. You mm-hmm. can use that in it. A little bit of milk of your choice. We use oat milk, um, uh, wild honey, so your lovely local mm-hmm. organic. Which there's a whole array in hops. I could be loads of including no Prince honey, my own, you and your own in the ice. Yeah, 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 it was indeed. Yeah, I just packed my this my 2023 season honey, which oh, is nice. Congratulations! Yeah, it's a treat. It's such yeah. a treat. That I like it was like a one for me, one for you yesterday. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. it's good. It's delicious. Fabulous. It's such a treat. You're like actually like food coming. Like it's they like made it. It's weird. Nectar. It's like alchemy. Like it's nice nectar, nectar, real nectar. Yeah. The creation. Yeah. The, the, the hexagons. The hexagons. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. there's this the golden thing. nectar. And then you know how good it is for you. And mm. you know these little bees that were in your garden. So it couldn't be more local. And you're looking after. I was pretty virtuous. The obviously, yes, so Felt pretty smug. Yeah. Fairly fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice thing. Yeah. Honey, honey is an amazing thing anyway. But like we're, we're so lucky to have we so many good, good beekeepers in Ireland as well. Do I mean it's thriving the 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 area. One of our I I know a guy who called me a couple of weeks ago said Finner I hear you guys sell any obstacles would you be interested in trying some for me I was like okay cool I mean like shelves are full of it but let's see what you have and try it a guy was producing sugar loaf honey and I oh damn it I was done ah okay be okay um, and anyway he came said he was going to give us he said this is how much I'll have I was like we'll take all of it it sounds gorgeous and it's delicious nice and but then he is a, a competitor colleague somebody from the community beekeepers came in uh who also supplies us 
I said like, oh, I see you got chugger love there. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, that was a bit of a cheeky move. I was like, cheeky. He's like, oh yeah, but like I told him everything he knew. I was like, wow. So there's like, <laughs> you know, there's like little infighting to they think they think they've cornered their shelf space and like they, there's like actual things going on there. So it's it's a competitive industry these days. Is what I'm saying. Be rivalry. Be rivalry. Be nicer to each other. Is what I say. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, that was a funny one. But yeah, that sugar love one is delicious. Amy McGee's Mount Apple one is gorgeous. There's yes, so many nice. So many. We try them all actually, and mm. we, we try and, and sometimes when we have a jar, I'm still on the go and get a new one in. We try and tell the difference. That's yeah. fun. Some, That's really fun. fun. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It, it it really is. So raw honey always goes into this as well. Mm. Um. Uh. And um, I blend it on high. And pour it out, and then we're choosing to a little toppings together as well. But that's where the nobo comes in. And um, we, you know, the kids, this is their their favorite ever. Um, but I mean, it's not something trashy. It's something mm. that's exactly. actually pumped with polyphenols and weirdly essential fatty acids. I know that's what I always tell people: weirdly essential fatty yeah. acids in a berry. Wow. Fabulous, yeah. yeah. So, and it comes frozen because it, it's highly perishable. So for anybody thinking of um, uh, why don't you just get fresh ones and what's the story with the frozen blocks? Say it comes over frozen. It's much. Um, uh, it's preserving everything it possibly can. It'd be cool to get an Irish version. I wonder what um, the yeah. fighter berry guys think of doing it with, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Erroneous. Yeah. With erroneous berries. Erroneous yeah. berry frozen, erroneous yeah. berry for erroneous so berry bowls. Erroneous berry bowls yeah. sounds great. It does. Yes. Mm. Although, you know how it has that thing where it's like, like it's like some sort of from your mouth. It might have to be blended. What, yeah, it be blended. With honey. With honey. There you go. Oh, Perfect. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Delicious. Inventing new food products as we go. Oh, this is so exciting. So I exciting. feel like uh, we could do loads of what's in your... Maybe we should do a what's in your basket this season, like, every couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sweet treats. What's in your basket? We're just, like, face. door stemper <laughs> at the counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you come to the hop sack, you will see me there. Like, I'm just... I'm constantly there, whether it's just coming in for um, a smoothie. They do incredible smoothies or juices. Lydia, can you tell me what's in this one that I've just had? It yeah, is so phenomenal. I can't wait to order this again. That is my favourite. It's that apple cider... Spiced apple cider. Yeah. Um, and it's like mm. apple juice, chai, fresh ginger juice, all sorts of like all the nice spices mm. in there, like cinnamon. It, it's, it's just basically stunning. like autumn in a cup, um, yeah, and a cardamom, autumn, digital, all those things. So you've got all the benefits of the spices. You've got the lovely vehicle of the apple, but you've got that kind of, it's also got like that, it's just got feeling. You know, it's yes. got that atmosphere where you're like, ooh, everything's cozy now. And yeah. so yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. so good for you because it's got all that ginger in as well. Mm. You just feel like you're getting all these lovely benefits, but it feels like a treat. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you ha if you live locally and you have a sore throat, for example, mm -hmm. get yourself in and have one of these and sore throat be gone. Literally that. Yes, bang on. Okay. So thank you very much, Susan, for coming to this. This is really You're special. So place. welcome. I yeah. loved coming in here. I and as, as you know, I, I, I couldn't do what I do without the hop sack. I well, literally couldn't do that. I don't think we could. Everything that I, I do in my kitchen is from the hop sack. Yeah. <laughs> our lives would be a lot sadder if we didn't have your presence in our shop on, on the debut as well. I really mean that. Um, so just raise to say thank you guys for watching or listening. And thank you so much to our sponsors. We are very, very lucky to have Clear Light Infrared Saunas as our and one of our partners. If you want to get the benefits of healing red light into your life, that beautiful sweat that you get, that time to yourself, you know, it's a real ritual and something you definitely want to save up for, but you will make use of it once you've spent the money because you have spent proper money. And it is in my back garden as my health insurance policy. And that's how I roll with my health. It's preventive healthcare. And it's also just enjoyable. Who doesn't love a sauna? So yeah, come to us to get your discount codes and we'll give you all the details that about that. Um, and you'll see the, the, the links in the, in, in the bio comments below. And also, we have our own clothing brand. I'm wearing it today. It's Wandering Into Wellness Project. Go to the Wandering Into Wellness Project. I can't thank you for that. Um, and, uh, I think and, people will just follow you around. So. People, <laughs> yeah, doing the fan hats. Nice. Um, yeah, to come and support what we're trying to do here, which is trying to bring you honest conversations that uh, hopefully unpack some of the intangibles around the health world and give you a little bit more insight into some of the lovely people in the health world like Susan Jane. Yeah. Thank you so much guys. Bye. See you later. Bye.